All right, I want to take a breath because it has been it's been a heavy day following the breaking news out of Roseville this afternoon. Ten, this afternoon tonight, we can tell you that a person has been shot and killed after being taken hostage. Another person and a CHP officer were also shot. There are still a lot of unknowns as to how this all unfolded. It happened near Mahaney Park at Pleasant Grove Boulevard and Wood Creek Oaks Boulevard. Young kids went into lockdown. The streets were crowded with neighbors, of course, asking questions and what was known as a quiet community. And now tonight we're getting the first messages sent by police dispatchers as the situation was unfolding. They have active gunfire around the station with ricochet around the station. Uh, I'd advise staging the Rayleigh's off of Wood Creek and Pleasant Grove until it's clear. We have one outstanding male in the field, black shirt, on with a pistol. On with a pistol. He's in the field and taking shots at officer. Can you advise PD and responding units that we had parks and rec personnel hunkered down, hiding behind their uh, outbuilding in front of Station 5? They're going to get need clearance uh, to evacuate the area. Be advised, we still have active gunfire all around the station. And of course, we are still digging through this sound and we'll have much more coming up tonight on Late News Tonight at 11. Again, all this happening in a very quiet community in Roseville in all of 2022. The entire city only had two homicides. And we continue our team coverage tonight with this. Uh, joining us, Roxanne Elias. She's near Roseville's Mahaney Park. We have Alicia Machado, who is out at Sutter Roseville, where three people were taken. And then Devin Truby is outside a day camp that went into lockdown. But first tonight, we're going to start off with Jeannie Wynn. She is at the site of the incident and was one of the first reporters to arrive on the scene. Good evening, Jeannie. I know that you've been talking to a lot of neighbors. What do we know so far? Alex, right now we're standing along Pleasant Grove and behind me here is the scene and it's still very much active. I'm going to step out of the way so you can get a better look. You know, this is the entrance to McHaney Park and it's been closed uh, ever since this incident started at around 1230. Uh, Roseville police did, did give us an update about two hours ago, you know, and they said that this all started when a CHP officer tried to serve somebody with a search warrant. It's still unclear what that search warrant was, uh, but Roseville police today did say that uh, that incident unfolded shortly after. Take a listen as to what happened. Upon arrival, officers were confronted by the suspect, still carrying a gun and now seen running from officers on scene. Suspect began shooting as he was running from police and took two citizens hostage for a short time until officers arrived and confronted the suspect. The suspect then surrendered to officers on scene and was taken into custody. All right. We'll Fire, one of them did not survive following this incident. And at this point, uh, the, the suspect and the surviving victim are currently at the hospital. Uh, their conditions are unknown at this point. Um, right now, police tell us that they are still obviously still investigating the scene. As you can see here, this access to McHaney Park is still closed. Uh, the situation is still unfolding. They're still trying to gather all their information. Uh, again, this is under investigation and will provide us more details as they unfold throughout the night and possibly even into tomorrow. Alex, back to you. All right, Jeannie, thank you again. This incident has left the community completely shocked. Our Roxanne Elias has been hearing from neighbors all day. They were lining the streets just looking for any answers that they could. So Roxanne Elias joining us now. Roxanne, what do we know so far this evening? Well, Alex, earlier today, we kept being pushed back and pushed back because they were trying to tape off the entire area. We're actually on one of the baseball fields here at Mahaney Park where people are calling it their second home. This is where families come, where students and young kids come to practice sports. Today, very unreal situation that they never thought they could imagine seeing happen here. Uh, we spoke to several residents that have lived here their entire lives. They said they've never even heard of a shooting happening in Roseville, much less some kind of situation like this. Take a listen to what they had to say. I feel like it's one of the best cities probably 
in California to live in and grow up. Like I graduated from Wood Creek High School. Like I spent a lot of time at these sports fields, at the library, the parks, everything. And just having something hit literally at home is just, it's heartbreaking. Like it just hits close to home. My son was just there on Tuesday playing with his friends. So all I can think about, you know, is if my son was there today and that happened, I just can't even imagine. And I hope everyone's okay. A very sad situation for families who know this place as a safe area, safe environment for them to come and hang out. Now, something else that I want to let you guys kind of paint the picture of what we saw out here and how scary it was for them is we actually saw some of these officers walking these children away from the area. Just very sad. Alex. All right, Roxanne, thank you so much. I'm sure it was definitely a very surreal moment for so many families in that area. But I do want to go ahead and get over to ABC 10's Alicia Machado. She is live at Sutter Roseville tonight, learning more about the conditions of those victims. Alicia, I just want to clarify, everyone was brought to Sutter Roseville, correct? Well, actually, Alex, we're learning tonight that two patients were brought here to Sutter Roseville Medical Center. One patient was brought to San Juan Mercy Medical Center. We're also learning today that one person is fighting for their life tonight here at Sutter. They are in critical condition. The other person is in stable condition, believed to be the police officer who was injured in that shooting near Mahaney Park. We are working to confirm that information with CHP officials at this time. I have seen some crime scene investigations units in and around the hospital. Again, one person also brought to Mercy San Juan Medical Center tonight. In total, we have three people shot in this incident, according to police, a CHP officer and those two hostages. One hostage died at the scene and the other person was taken to the hospital. The CHP says their officer is in stable condition, being treated in the hospital for their injuries. We will continue to keep you updated on their that uh, officer's condition as we learn more about that. No word just yet on the injuries the suspect may have sustained. We were told by police that they were taken to the hospital, but we don't exactly know why or the extent of what they may have been facing after this incident. Again, so far we know that the officer is in stable condition. One victim is dead and another in critical condition tonight. We will continue to keep you updated on condition information as we learn it. We are in contact with the hospital tonight and we'll let you know more as we learn it both on air and online at abc10.com. Alex. Alicia, thank you. And our co coverage continues in Roseville. I mean, young kids were put on lockdown during the shooting and we're hearing from one of them right after this break. We are still trying to understand what happened in Roseville this afternoon. A person has been shot and killed after being taken hostage. Another person and a CHP officer were also shot and a suspect is in custody. This all happened in a quiet community around Mahaney Park. Wood Creek High School is in this area and thankfully they were on spring break. I want to bring in our Devin Truby. She has been hearing from the children from a camp that had to go on lockdown. Uh, good evening, Devin. What information can you tell us tonight? Well, Alex, I can tell you that we are the last people here, which means that all staff and students have headed home from what has been a long and emotional day. When we first were on the scene at three o'clock, there were about four students left that still needed to be picked up. And there was this overwhelming sense of relief as parents were able to see their children in person. By four o'clock, staff members came out and told us that all 27 students that were brought over from the camp at Mahaney Park had been reunited safely with their family. We talked to one of those campers, Matthew. That's who you heard from at the beginning of this show, who told us that he was on the base Ball field eating ice cream when they heard multiple gunshots ring out. They ran for cover at the library and he kept track of time. They were locked down for an hour and 45 minutes. Hear from his father on what he was going through while his son was waiting for him. My wife was so, so worried, so she called me to just pick her up. And, uh, she tried to pick him up in the uh, actual location, but it was it blocked. 
Now we are just one block down and one block over from the Haney Park where all the students were brought here by bus. Now we are also hearing from the city of Roseville that runs this parks and recreation camp that all operations will resume as normal tomorrow, which is good news because the campers we talked to Alex, they said that they want to come back tomorrow. They want to be with their friends for that support and I'm sure a lot of important conversations happening at dinner tables tonight about what to do in these unfortunate situations, Alex. Thank you, Devin. And our team is continuing to cover this story, trying to learn the name of the, the names of the victims and also what led up to this incident. So we are committed to bringing you those updates as we get them. After the break, calling 311 in Sacramento. We're looking at the process after one man says that his calls are not giving him results. Okay, if you live in the city of Sacramento, you have likely heard about the 311 call system. It's a customer service line and people use it to report an issue and then the city reviews it. And then they decide what agency or department works on that issue. And the city says that the estimated time to work on issues, it can vary. But tonight we're hearing from one man hoping that the city could hurry up a little bit. When Josh Feldman moved into this neighborhood near downtown Sacramento nearly two years ago. I decided to move in there because the rent was really good for the house. It's a three bedroom, three bath house. The last thing he thought he would have were problems with unhoused neighbors. We had a homeless person knock on our door and tell us, uh, yeah, I was told this was my house. He says the problem got worse about a month ago. This trailer moved in and just got dropped across the street from my neighbor's house. And um, it's just been there ever since. They don't clean up. When the dogs go to the bathroom, they don't clean up when they go to the bathroom. They're throwing their drug paraphernalia, trash. They're just completely disrespecting their surroundings. On my street, like I've had their dog poop on my lawn, I've or on my driveway, on my lawn, in front of my door. I'm worried, you know, if they break in and my cat's getting out, I'm worried about my belongings. Feldman says he's been contacting 311, the city of Sacramento's customer service line. According to the city, calls to 311 are answered by a customer service agent who will help find the appropriate government service to respond to the call. In Feldman's case, this map shows there have been 22 311 calls in the past month. A city spokesperson says the Department of Community Response has recently been out to the area twice to inform people about the laws, ordinances, and to offer services to work towards voluntary compliance. But even with that work, Feldman says all his attempts have failed in trying to find a solution. They're not really worried about me or my family or my neighbors. I feel like they're more worried about keeping the homeless safe than me. We reached out about Feldman's calls. Sacramento police tells us Feldman's complaints are now under investigation, and the department's central problem-oriented policing team is dedicated to community complaints like this. Right now, there are still five open requests on 311, and the city says that staff will be responding to this area again in the coming days. I think if my, my neighborhood makes enough noise, something can happen, and maybe even get them some help. And Sacramento City agencies are very busy. We talked to code enforcement back in October last year. They have been hard at work with the city's abandoned car issue because last year, more than 20,000 vehicle complaints had stacked up. All right, and check this out. The sun is shining in South Lake Tahoe. Can, beautiful, beautiful sight. Take a look at this picture. But that doesn't mean that our storms are over quite yet. Let's get things over to meteorologist Carly Gomez. At least it'll be beautiful this weekend, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have one more storm system that is sent to arrive. It's actually making its way onshore as we speak. The winds are going to also start picking up. Looking at the big mountain backyard, we're starting to see temperatures at least drop a tiny bit. But we're still rather warm as the clouds roll in. They're not dropping quick enough like they were yesterday. So we're still sitting in those mid-60s to low 60s. Clouds rolling into Sacramento right now in Marysville at 62, 43 in Tahoe. Now take a look as we look toward the weekend here, the Easter weekend. We are expecting some more sunshine and warm temperatures, but we will still see some scattered showers through at least Friday lunchtime. By the afternoon, we could start getting a little bit of clearing, but the winds are also going to play a factor as we get 5 to 15 mile per hour winds in the valley. Stronger winds through the Sierra. They're so low. And there are all those scattered showers pushing onshore right now near the northwest portion of the state, starting to approach areas of I-5 near Chico and Red Bluff, as well as even Yuba City. Now, the winter weather advisory will bring in as much as 2 to maybe 8 inches of snowfall with gusts 
over 40 miles per hour in effect till 2 p.m. on Friday. And there's the strong winds for the Sierra as we look into the afternoon hours and then lightening up just a bit for the valley, about 10 mile per hour winds into the weekend, anywhere from about 3 to 7 mile per hour winds inland. And then we will see the rain starting to arrive as early as about 9 p.m. or so for the Sacramento area. Maybe a few spotty showers talked to Modesto, but take a look at this line. For that morning commute, we could expect to see some of those showers right around 5 a.m. across most areas of the valley toward Chico as well in those foothill spots. But again, by the afternoon, you're looking at 1.30, mostly cloudy skies, most of the showers out of the way. Then that clearing happening in the overnight hours into your Saturday with some more sunshine and sunshine into your Sunday, Easter Sunday. Again, anywhere from about 1 to maybe 8 inches in the central Sierra. Last and though could get as much as 12 to 18 inches. Looking at Easter Sunday, temperatures around 76 degrees, sunshine, warm conditions, Pretty perfect for that Easter egg hunt. And let's take a look at that 10-day forecast as we will see temperatures in the 70s Saturday, Sunday, Monday, even Tuesday with more sunshine and 70s the following weekend. All right, thanks, Carly. And all of these Northern California storms we continue to talk about have been a double-edged sword for our climate. The good news is that these were our drought conditions across the state back in September before those historic storms. The areas in dark red were considered to be an exceptional drought, and this is the new drought monitor just released today. So right now, no part of the state is considered to be in exceptional drought. So some good news there. But in California, Rangelands make up nearly two thirds of all the state's land. They are hugely important for our agriculture and water storage. But as meteorologist Brennan Minchef explains, this historic winter is a double edged sword. Rangelands, you can think of as those big open landscapes that surround us um, all over the state. They are incredibly biologically diverse. They are such an important part of our landscape in California, yet they are also some of the most vulnerable to drought and climate change. You know, for rangelands, which is largely rain-fed agriculture. Drought is um, always looming, as we say. Um, drought has really had a shaping force on these lands for, for millennia. Drought is really the, the, the rule rather than the exception. The, the amount of precipitation is important. I think we're good this year, but the amount is important, but um, also really critical is the timing of that precipitation for growth. This year in particular really showcases that where we've had a lot of rain, but it's been colder than normal. And that has actually limited grass growth. But water is in so many ways a double-edged sword. Not enough is a problem, as is too much all at once. Water sustains life and brings new life as well. And when it comes to wildfire, a lot of new plant growth followed by very dry conditions is a recipe for disaster. And rangelands can dry out quickly. Actually, there's been work showing that across the West, our worst wildfire years have been those drought years that actually followed really good years, so years with a, um, average or above average precipitation. When we have a really um, good productivity year from, um, from good rains followed by an, a, a drought year, that's when um, there's a lot of risk there for wildfire. But it's not just natural issues that rangelands need protection from. It's also people. We have a lot of urban uh, wildland interface areas and a lot of population growth. And so one of the, one of the big, um, big challenges for rangelands is just the conservation of these lands. You know, there's a lot of threats, um, you know, with the increasingly variable climate, with these extreme events like um, severe wildfires and severe drought. Um, it's gonna, you know, take, you know, all hands on deck really to think about how we can sustain and conserve these lands. And our Brendan Minchev continues to track the impact of our drought. You can find his in-depth updates every Sunday on the ABC 10 YouTube page. Still ahead, light the beam. We are screaming it all day here in the studio. The Kings are getting ready to play their last home game of the regular season. And we want to hear what the team means to you. All right, as we round out the show, here is what people are talking about in our communities today. All eyes on Roseville after a person was shot and killed after being taken hostage. Another person and a CHP officer were also shot and a suspect is in custody. We are continuing to cover this breaking news tonight on Late News Tonight at 11. Sonora High School was locked down today because of a threat of a shooting near campus. Police there were unable to confirm or find any credible threat to students or staff or evidence that a shooting happened.
And the Kings play their last home game of the regular season tomorrow, and they are taking on the Golden State Warriors. Expect a very crowded Golden One Center tomorrow night. And if you can get tickets, it's going to cost you at least uh, 200 bucks a seat. And the Kings will have the home court advantage. They first... First playoff game is April 15th, and we want to hear from you. What do the Kings mean to you? Share some of your stories, your photos, and just email them to, to us at ToThePoint at ABC10.com. Before we go, I do want to say I know that this has been a very heavy day. If you've been following our coverage here, take some time for yourself. Check on the ones that you love. Give them a call. Give them a hug. But just take some time for yourself today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll see you here tomorrow night. Hey, it's Alex. Just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I really love hearing from everyone, and I hope that you'll stay in touch. Reach out to me on Facebook at Alex Bell TV, or you can email me at ToThePoint at ABC10.com, or you can even send me a text message at 916-321-3310.